In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the recent 2022.10 update for Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys, I hope you're all doing well. Update 2022.10 has just been released, and this one's a much smaller update compared to last month's, but nevertheless, it's still a good one. Let's kick this off with my first feature, and just like with the previous two updates, it's Bluetooth. In the previous updates, we've gained things like passive Bluetooth proxies, and this allows us to receive information from surrounding Bluetooth devices. But in today's update, we now have something called active Bluetooth, and what this allows us to do is to send data in both ways, so now your little Bluetooth proxy can be placed anywhere in your home and it can actually relay information to Bluetooth devices and then pass it back to Home Assistant directly. And if that wasn't cool enough, once again with this update, the performance for Bluetooth has once again been enhanced. So if you're making use of Bluetooth dongles, then you should notice that it's now even snappier. Staying on topic with the whole Bluetooth thing, iBeacon tracking is now also supported in Home Assistant. Now there is currently a limited number of different iBeacons that have been tested and are known as supported within Home Assistant, and they are listed on the Home Assistant page. If you are interested in checking those out, there'll be a link to it in the description below. I haven't yet managed to have a go at this myself, and I'm still waiting on a couple of beacons to arrive, but as soon as they do, I'll test it out and I'll let you know how well it works. Up next, we've got probably my favorite feature of the update, and that's subviews. Subviews are a new type of view, and what makes them special is the fact that they don't appear in the navigation bar, meaning the only way you can actually navigate to them is by using the navigation action. You can tie a navigation action to pretty much any Home Assistant card, but probably the most common one that's going to be used is a button. So when you select your button, it's going to jump you over to your new subview. The subview looks and acts pretty much like a normal view would. The only real difference between it when you're actually in the subview is there's no navigation bar at the top, and instead you're going to have this little back button. Pressing that back button is going to take you back to wherever you navigated from by default, but if you wanted to, you can also customise that navigation button so it takes you back to a different place or to a different view. You set up a subview like a normal view, but instead you choose subview. Subviews are going to be great for creating things like mobile dashboards and tablet dashboards, where if you've got big icons, you can just select them and it will jump you into a specific area. So for example, if you've got a big button that says living room, you could press that and then it's going to just show you everything in that living room and then you can just press the back button and jump straight out of it. Carrying on with my third feature, and this one pretty much goes hand in hand with subviews and you may not have even noticed it. Drop downs for navigations is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Now when you're setting up a navigation path, you're going to get a drop down for all of the different views and subviews that you have access to and you'll be able to easily select them. So you're no longer gonna to have to worry about remembering the different URL parameters for the particular view that you wanna to jump to. As long as you name your views accordingly, you'll be able to easily select them and find them in that drop down list. Up next, we've got my fourth feature, and this one is just some very small and subtle changes to the UI and UX. If you've got a keen eye for design, then you'll notice some very small changes around the Home Assistant UI. And these changes are things like some of the styling and also some of the text and dialogues that actually appear on the screen. Some of the most noticeable ones are things like the highlighted red delete button on the various pop-up dialogues for things like delete confirmations. There's been a few of these small and subtle design changes across Home Assistant and it just makes Home Assistant feel a little bit more uniform and it also brings them a step closer to the version 3 of material design that Home Assistant follows. Another change for the UI is the expanding on brands and the inclusion of integration icons. Integrations now have a prominent little icon just in the bottom right corner that let you know before you click them whether it's a cloud-based, third-party or local integration. With this update, brands have also changed. Now when you're searching for a brand or a particular integration, it will collate all those integrations that belong to the same brand under one umbrella, and this just makes it easier to find all the integrations that are from the same manufacturer or brand. Some brands that follow open standards that don't necessarily have their own Home Assistant integrations now actually appear in the integration list. Take Innovelli for example. As it follows an open standard, it can just be set up using Zigbee or Z-Wave, so it doesn't have its own integration, but if you search for it in the integration list, it will actually appear, and when you select it, it will give you the choice of either setting up a new Z-Wave device or a new Zigbee device. That's a very subtle change, but it's a nice push in the right direction for new Home Assistant users that may not necessarily know how to pair those devices. 
Wrapping this all up then with my fifth and final feature, and it's the ability to view YAML created automations in the automation editor. Previously, if you'd created your automations using YAML and you tried to view them in the automation editor, you'd get a little error message, which wasn't all that helpful. But now you're actually able to view those YAML based automations using the automation editor, and it kind of looks like you actually created them in the automation editor itself. And while this isn't going to be for everybody, especially if you're all about creating those automations in YAML, it's just a very nice glance that you can actually do. And should you decide you actually want to move it over to the UI, you can actually just migrate it over using the new migrate feature. The migrate feature will allow you to move that YAML automation directly over to the automation editor. And from here, you can then start modifying it and editing it just like you would with any automation you'd created using the UI. One thing to note here is that if you do do that migration, the old automation does still exist in YAML. So if you're making a new version, it's just going to be a copy of it and you will need to manually go and remove that YAML based automation. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick look at five new features that I really like in the 2022.10 update for Home Assistant. If you've enjoyed the video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Should you want to see any other Home Assistant based videos from me, then you should definitely go and check out this playlist just here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.